calling AccuWeather. Hi, sure, this is Emily. How can I help you? Hi, yes, may I please speak to a meteorologist? Can I ask who's calling? This is Amanda Bays. Where are you calling from? Virginia Beach, Virginia. Are you a client of ours? A client? No. Okay, because only uh, clients um, can speak to meteorologists directly. Wait, wait, how would I be a client of AccuWeather? Uh, people pay for, like, weather uh, alerts and warnings and to speak with meteorologists about weather. So you have stuff. to pay to speak to a meteorologist. Okay, well, do you have someone there that I can speak to about the conditions here in Hampton Roads? Unfortunately not. Like I said, you have to be a client to speak with someone directly. How do I become a client? Out. That's interesting. Uh, you can go to our sales department if you would like. Sure. Send me to your sales department. Sure. Just one second. Oh, this is Rich. Hi, this is Liz. How can I help you? Hi, yes. I was calling to get some information on how to become a client of AccuWeather. Okay, and what type of service were you looking for? I wasn't aware that you had any services, so I guess we could start there. What is a basic service of AccuWeather, and how much well, does it cost? what kind of business are you in? I'm uh, just a civilian citizen. Oh, well, oh, so if you just need basic information, <laughs> you go to AccuWeather.com, the recent sales department, which is for uh, <clears throat> businesses and companies, enterprise. Okay, how would, can you can you give me or can you direct me to um, a phone number or to a, just where I would look up to get uh, to speak to somebody um, about the weather conditions here in Hampton Roads? Like, who do I call? Is there a public number? Uh, uh, no. No, our meteorologists are business-based, but you can get for free on AccuWeather.com. You can get that on your cell phone, smartphone. Right. I want to know, I, I need to speak to somebody because some stuff's been going down here in Hampton Roads, so I just, is it, is $250 that, to start. $250, okay. Yeah. And then to that would. with a meteorologist. Okay, so it, what is it, 250 a month? Oh, no, that's for a consultation service. Oh, my gosh, so it costs $250 just for a one-time Yes, yeah, see, what they do is if you give them the area, then they pull up a customized forecast just for your area. So they have to sit there for an hour or two to do the exact, it's, it's technical. Wow, okay. Well, I mean, yeah. don't they have that on radar? I mean, don't they have like a live streaming, you know? Isn't oh, that... yes. Oh, yes. Do you have a computer? Yeah. Okay, just go to AccuWeather.com. Right. But then I wouldn't be able to speak to the person because I have specific questions. Do you think if I should call, like, the, is there a government agency that I could call that has to give us information? I don't know. You could call the National Weather Service. National Weather Service. Okay. I'll, yes. I'll try them. Okay. Okay. Thank you, ma'am. All right. Sorry I couldn't help. That's Thanks. okay. Bye. Bye-bye. National Weather Service. Hi, yes. May I please speak to a meteorologist? And where are you calling from, ma'am? Virginia Beach, Virginia. Okay. Are you just needing to know about the weather for the weekend? Oh, no. I just wanted to ask them some questions about the past month. Okay, one moment. Okay. Eastern Standard Time Sunday. The National Weather Service in Wakefield has issued a winter storm. Oh, well, can I help you? Hi, yes. Are you a meteorologist? Uh, I used to be. Now I'm their IT, but I can do both. That's okay. If you used to be, that's close enough for me. Okay, so my name's Amanda Bays, and I live in Virginia Beach, Virginia, and we have been overcast for over a month now, and I am deathly ill. My parents are ill as well, and I was just wondering if you can explain to me why we've been overcast for over a month. Uh, no. There is no, there's no, there's no quick answer. I mean, as far as cloud coverage and all that stuff, we don't track, um, like, statistically, like, the percentage of cloudy days. I mean, it's, it's stuff you can probably look up. Um, are you right on the ocean? Are you on the ocean view side? Or? Um, no, I mean, I live near the beach, but I'm not on the ocean. Right. Um, I mean, the, there, there isn't any big major weather pattern that is causing anything like that. Are you, are you talking like the seasonal, like, um, 
I'm talking about our skies have been completely covered, which I have documented through video footage for the past month, and even longer than that. And I also would like to point out that I have personally witnessed fleets of aircraft emitting garbage in the sky, which turns into artificial cloud cover, creating artificial overcast conditions. And I want to hear from a meteorologist an excuse worthy for me to accept of why naturally the sky is like this other than what i've witnessed myself which is fleets of aircraft emitting garbage in the sky which is creating this condition we don't have any relationship with the military at all there's no relationship with our office so we have no clue you know if such a thing was occurring they don't ever communicate that with us right but i didn't mention the military i just okay, want you our, to our aircraft is rather uh, i mean i've surfed out of virginia beach the last couple of uh like the last month and a half, uh, a few days. And yeah, you're right. Yeah, I had some sun in the morning, and then you know, driving back to, to work, it definitely got really cloudy. Um, it got cloudy because of the aircraft emissions. I witnessed this. I document this. I have all the footage, and, you know, I find it very disheartening that when I go to the authorities, the proper quote-unquote weather authorities, they right. do absolutely nothing about it. I'm here on my damn deathbed, sir. I mean, I've got this flu. I haven't been sick in five years, you know. Right. And I believe it is due to us. We're not getting sun. We're not getting photosynthesis. We're not getting the sunlight that our bodies need, you know. And um, the aircraft emissions that are spraying out into the sky, I watch them as they start off as a line and they spread ap apart and they turn into cloud cover. Now, how high up are these aircraft that you're saying? Are you talking like the kind of, that's high enough where you can't hear them, like jetliners, or are we talking like the military? I'm talking about fleets of aircraft going in every single direction, making X's, grids, doing U-turns, doing circles, laps. I mean, these are commercial jets, military jets. Um, jets with no identifiable markings on them, jets that show up on flight radar, jets that don't show up on flight radar. I mean, this is absurd, and right. I believe it's a crime against humanity, what's going on. I believe this is weather warfare. I, I, want, I want an answer from a meteorologist that will make sense to me so well, I can put I'm this into perspective. The, uh, well, I mean, today's not a good day to talk because you've got a snowstorm that's going to come up from the, the Gulf Coast area across southeast, so I'm looking at satellite imagery right now. You've got, you know, a, an entire blanket of clouds, let's say from Alabama all the way to, to Maine, and then you could go back west a little bit. Once this system comes through, it's going to be a quick shot tomorrow. You're going to get some clearing into Sunday into Monday. Now, you should get some sunny skies. Oh, so that. sunny skies for two days out of 30. I mean, that's... Well, you know, your weather does usually come from the west to the east, so, I mean, I can't I can't comment on, on, on anything that the military might or might not be doing. That's that, that's not what I went to school for as far as getting up, but I'm looking at weather that's coming at you from the southwest right now. I mean, that's but do you guys, like, do you guys actually, when you're doing your weather forecast, can you see the airplane emissions, in, you know, that are going across the sky, because I can see them with my bare eye. I can see them f from my airplane when I'm looking right. down. I no, can the only time we can see that stuff is, is, is if, and, and this, this goes kind of full circle, where it if it was a clear day on a satellite, okay, so like, like we can see a forest fire, if there's clear weather, and somebody lights a forest fire, let's say they set a couple hundred acres on fire, we can see that on a visible satellite imagery. And then anytime any other clouds get in the way, then they're being blocked. So if it was a completely clear day, we occasionally see the contrails from aircraft, but they're moving, that those contrails are, are moving a lot quicker than the satellite imagery is really designed to take a picture of. Okay, now and you use the term contrail. What does that mean? That's the, that's the water vapor that comes out the back of an aircraft. Well, what, makes you, what makes you say that it's water vapor? Because you haven't identified... That's a byproduct of every culture. Right, but you haven't identified the specific aircraft that I'm speaking of, and, and without testing the emissions, it's unscientific for you to, to no, definitively it's state it's that it's a contrail. No, it is. It, it's a, any combustion engine has an output of water. You look behind your car during it, if it's warming up and running, you're going to see drips of water coming Well, out. where were the contrails 10, 15 years ago? The airplanes didn't always emit trails that crossed across the sky. I remember what skies looked like when I was a kid. I remember what skies looked like in 1994 when I graduated high school. I mean, I can go back in history. The first quote-unquote contrail that you're saying, I witnessed in 2005. So do you mean to tell me that you're going to tell me that you don't, you know for a fact that there are aircraft up there that are not spraying something? I have no clue about that. 
See, so you can't. So yeah. if you don't know for sure, sir, I'm telling you, I'm concerned that these are aircraft that are spraying stuff into the atmosphere to create this artificial cloud cover. Well, have you gone in contact with the EPA? Yes, sir. I testified on C-SPAN about it. And what was their did they, did their they response was to cover it up, which is the, they're the biggest cover-up agency out of all of them. I've been to the FAA, the DEQ, the FBI, uh, the police. I mean, uh, the the governor, the White House. I mean, you can name any type of agency. I've already spoken to all of them. I just find it very disheartening that you know any uh, you're a meteor or ex meteorologist, but you're still a meteorologist. You don't lose right. it, you know. But that you guys are gonna. Not one of you guys is going to stand up for us and say something different is going on. I mean, if you've been watching the skies, you have to notice that there's a difference in what's going on in our atmosphere right now. They are experimenting up there. They're doing something. Well, uh, I don't, me personally, my worries are of other sorts of governmental things. We, 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 we will agree to disagree on this specific, this certain topic, but I think that there are other things that they're doing that, that I would be personally more concerned about. Let me ask you a question. Can you see what they're doing above the artificial cloud cover? No, not, no, not the problem with that is we get multiple cloud layers. When you actually have weather, like let's just say there is weather that's creating some of the clouds, then the satellite, you're, you're, you're seeing a series of layers. And remember, those, those aircraft are moving way faster than satellites are designed for that picture cup. That's the other problem. Oh, you understand so, how frustrating this is for me to oh, be. Oh, no, I do, I do. And, and, we will agree to disagree on this this particular event, but I will agree with you that there are things being done covertly. I agree 100 percent on that. I just, it, it, you know, I, I'm, it, that that's what you, it's impacting you personally. Yeah. Is there it's some way for is there some way for you guys to test the atmosphere for heavy metals and chemicals that may be being added without our consent? We don't have any chemists here. That's problem number one. Problem number two is even if we could get a chemist to come out here to get a, an accurate sample would be really hard. See, I don't even know if airborne chemists can, can – they'd have to probably fly an aircraft through it. See, when you drop something – let's say you're in an aircraft that's 1,000 feet up and it drops something out. That's going to fall over several miles. That's another problem. And what about uh, – not, not the EPA. But what about something like um, – I want to say like Surf Rider Foundation, but they're they're more of the ocean. Um, that would be the other thing. To, to well, I need somebody Water within the government with a chase plane that's willing to test these emissions for us and come back with an actual sample and give us a genuine answer. I mean, this is ridiculous. That I mean, I'm just one person. I shouldn't have right. to, you know, I track planes. Have you talked to them? I'm sorry. About oh, Greenpeace. Greenpeace does not test air emissions. DEQ does not test air emissions. And it, um, even um, the DEQ, they test, um, they do not test for heavy metals and chemicals. Like, they will test for other stuff, but not the heavy metals and biological material. That's what we're concerned about. Right. So... Another one of what I'm thinking of, uh, the Audubon Society, but they're pretty much always... And the Sierra Club and all that. These are all fluff, you know, they, they do their little part, but they don't deal with this. What I'm dealing with is a clandestine spraying operation that's probably some covert military thing that I'm unable to get help from with anybody. And I've been doing this for years and years. It's just going on. Yeah, I've already tried them. Yeah, they actually said that they – I tried to get ODU to test my snow. I have a bag of snow in my freezer that I've had for two years that I wanted to get tested. Is there any number that you can refer me to? Um not, not with the chemist handy. That, well, you know, the other thing is, what about, I mean, the private testing? You know, like, no, they told me that. They said that they cannot, it said, they said that I could actually have my test. I called NASA, and they're like, right. well, you can have your test analyzed, and you can bring us the results, but we can't prove that you didn't taint it, where you got the sample from, what caused that contamination. It's a wide variety of things. So the EPA themselves even told me that, they would have to come out and get a sample, and then they would have to put that sample through Congress before they could even come back and act on it. It's you guys have made it, not you, but the system right. has hey, made I'm it impossible. Don't, don't blame me. Yeah, yeah, the system has made it impossible for the people to protect themselves. All we want is clean air. I'm a voice, one no, of the I many. 
But oh, I, well, the only thing I can think of is, is, is maybe Google online a private testing company that would come out to your property. Let's just say they took a couple ounces of your soil. They, they, they'd have to put it in the jar and do a chain of custody, meaning that they'd have to track that it goes from your yard to the jar, sealed to the lab, to a chemist. Because I used to, before I went to Weather Service, I used to work for Corning. And I was a lab technician, and we had to do that whole thing. Now, there's tons of private companies like that would come out and test your water and test your soil, and that was that's relatively inexpensive. And that way you get a tracking of custody. Yeah. Now, let, let's say let's just say that, that stuff was falling from the sky. Then it's obviously hitting your roof. It's hitting your trees. It's hitting your yard. It's hitting you. The, the only way you could get a smoking gun is to have your soil tested. Because it's, let's say it's falling on your I yard. I have all those results. I have soil, that's, blood, that's hair, that's and water. And I actually brought that. them before the EPA in Washington, D.C. on live national television. And nothing happened. What, what did the results show, though? The results showed high levels of barium, strontium, aluminum, mercury, lead, all kinds of crazy stuff, uranium and stuff, and nothing happened, sir. <laughs> no, I, that, that's interesting, though. Uh, that's, I mean, you, 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 okay, let me ask uh, you a question personally. What's your, what's your name? I'm Brian. Brian. Okay, Brian. Um, how, long, how long is it until you retire? Uh, a long time. Oh. I was going to see if maybe you could help me. No. You can't help no. me on the side? No. no, I don't have a, I don't have the connections like that. Like You're a, a meteorologist at the National Weather... Yeah, but see, we just look at the clouds and all that stuff. What it sounds like is you need an atmospheric chemist. So that's that's the thing, and I don't have I don't have any contact with that. You don't have any atmospheric... Well, the other place you can go is maybe out in Boulder, the, the University of uh, UCAR, which is... Uh, Atmospheric Research Center, University of Colorado type stuff. And okay. They might have some consulting meteorologists, but okay. Why do you say the University of Colorado? Yeah, that's a UCAR, um, like the Atmospheric Research people up there. Okay. But oh. this, this is a, I mean, this is a battle you're going to have to fight, and then I don't, I don't know other than getting. Now, when you say that you did the, the lab analysis, if they took a sample, of, let's say from West Virginia, is that going to come up the same type of stuff? Did, did the results say that, that the, the levels were of... Oh, yeah. Were they, they so out of tolerance for, like, human living. Oh, yeah, like that hundreds of thousands of times in some cases. They were just and astronomical, your, yep. And your local health department wasn't concerned about that? Um, I, I went through... I've gone through... <laughs> I've gone through everybody, yes. I mean, if look, if I brought forth this information on live national television to the EPA, the heads of the EPA, and they didn't do anything about it. What makes you think my local health department is? I mean, I already went to the health department first. They were one of the first people. It was going to be televised. I've, I've had wavy TV 10 news involved. I mean, you really can't name an avenue I haven't tried to exploit, but I'm. T it's just it's just crazy and it's really sad, but I'm just concerned that we're never going to not be overcast again. We've been overcast for so long. Every morning when I wake up, it's the same overcast. And then when the clouds part, there's that airplane emission right there in the middle. You know, they're spraying above the clouds. So. Well, well this, this isn't a good example today because you've got weather and it's coming up the coast. So, you know, the snow is going to come from the cloud cover. So, so this is legitimate weather. Without, and, and aircraft are still flying today. You just don't see them. It's not the, the flying aircraft. It's the spraying aircraft. They're two different aircraft. There's normal aircraft and then there's uh, aircraft that are intentionally adding stuff to the atmosphere. It's called, I, I'm not going to use this term because I don't even know if I believe it, but it's geoengineering, climate weather warfare. I mean, who knows if they're using it for, like, radar or um, if they're using it for the satellites. or I mean, I'm not going to speculate, but I'm just saying that uh, it's ridiculous. So you're saying that I should call the University of Colorado, right? Yeah, you call Okay. Well, you've All been right, very you yeah. You've been very kind to me. I really appreciate you just talking okay. to me. All right. Thank you, sir. Good morning, you car. This is Tiki. How can we help you? Um. Yes, ma'am. I'm trying to reach your atmospheric research department. Okay. Um. Can you tell me what it's what it's about so oh. I can get you to the right person? Right. It's regarding um Virginia Beach, Virginia, Hampton Roads, uh, weather conditions, and some questions I had about the atmosphere. For just a minute, please. Sure. Ma'am, thank you for holding. Okay. Okay. So, um, 
I can give you a web address. I want to speak to someone. Okay, so the the web address is going to point you to the um, your local. Um, I wasn't. I was actually called. I called my local place and they directed me to you guys. They said that I needed to speak to an atmospheric scientist in regards to what I'm concerned about. Okay. Um, Do you have an atmospheric scientist that would be willing to speak to me and answer a couple questions? Um, just a minute. Okay. I'm being directed to the website, so I'm going to see what I can find here that might be helpful for you. Yeah, because websites don't do anything for me. I actually need to speak to a human. I mean, I can go on the website and look up stuff all day long. But I need to hear it from the horse's mouth. And that's what the National Weather Service told me to do. They directed me to you guys and said that you were a specifically a scientist, uh, atmospheric research scientist was who I needed to speak to. Find weather history, find current weather data. Um, Speak to a scientist. <laughs> Is that one of the options? It's not one of the options, but let me see. Let me go back because it's going to point me to local things. But I don't think anybody local is what I need. I've already exploited, I mean, I've called every government agency, every NASA scientist, you know, um, I was referred to you guys because I guess you are uh, well educated in the field that I have questions about. So. Okay, and what is the field that you have questions about? Uh, the atmosphere, and uh, what is causing uh, the conditions that are currently going on right now. It's not even just that; it's just atmospheric science involving uh, pollution and stuff like of that nature. Okay. Where can I find current weather data from radar, satellites, instruments, and forecast model output? That doesn't help me. I know I can. I have live radar image, satellite images from my area. It doesn't do anything. It doesn't answer the questions that I have. I specifically watch um, the sky be covered in pollution, and it's causing um, artificial overcast conditions here. And I want to speak to a scientist about where, how I can get the atmosphere here tested for heavy metals and biological material, chemicals and other stuff that the DEQ, which does not uh, test mobile sources of emissions. See, it's too much information for me to just be telling you. That's why I need to be speaking to a scientist. Uh, I understand. I just want to get you in the right place and not just point you to a website that's going to get you to someone local. Right. Um, and I'm, I'm sorry, I'm a little bit new, so I'm going to, um, I need to go back and find out where I can send you that would be um, best suited to help you, okay? It can't be somebody so, that actually works there? The, you're in the president's office, so... Wait, 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 so what did you say? I'm looking at... I'm in what? Right, right now you're in the president's office for the... Uh, University Corporation for Atmospheric Research. I'm in the and president's we, office? Right. And we manage the National Center for Atmospheric Research. Okay, so wow. There's no scientists in this building. Okay. There, so I would have to locate a scientist for you to talk to. Gotcha. Um, so it's going to take me a little bit to figure out That's what okay. area of scientists I should send you to because we have multiple areas of scientists. Yes, gotcha. Um, Okay, so I'm so, I'm sorry for the delay. You're fine. Thank you. Yep. I'm just gonna put you on hold, okay? Yes, and okay. tell me, what's your name, ma'am? My name is Amanda Bays, B A I S E. Okay, Amanda. All right. Let me put you on hold, and I'll see what I can find, okay? Sure. Amanda. Yes, ma'am. Um, I'm going to transfer you to Jenny Gallon. Okay. Gallon, and she is uh, a senior editor for news and social media, okay. media relations associate in the in our office. Okay. Um, and so she said that she would take your call, okay? Sounds good to me. Thank you. All right. Communications, this is Jenya. Hi, yes, ma'am. My name is Amanda Bays, and I was referred to you guys from the National Weather Service. I live in Virginia Beach, and I'm con uh -huh. extremely concerned about the overcast conditions that we've had here for over a month now. 
I personally witnessed fleets of aircraft spraying out emissions into the sky, which cover, you know, they break apart and turn into artificial cloud cover. I was calling to see if there was any atmospheric scientist that you could refer me to that I could speak to about finding someone to test uh, the air here for heavy metals, biological material, or um, chemicals. Mm -hmm. So have you been keeping up with the conversations on the Internet about so-called chemtrails? Um, why? What do you have for me? you have any information for me? I have information on how contrails form when they come out of the tails of jets. Okay. Well, without without knowing what aircraft I'm speaking of and without testing the emissions from these specific aircraft that you have yet to identify, you cannot definitively state to me that it is a contrail. That's why I would need an atmospheric scientist or researcher to possibly rent a chase plane and to go up and test these emissions. All I know is what I can witness from ground level, which is that I wit You're witnessing these, these uh clouds uh, coming out the tail and then and sweating then, out across uh, the Sweating out across the sky and not dissipating, which is what mm -hmm. a contrail would do, because a contrail, in essence, is water vapor. Water vapor itself is a chemical, but um, we're not going to debate over that. Um, I witnessed them stay in the sky forever and then turn into artificial cloud cover, which is blocking the sun. I am deathly ill mm -hmm. right now. I have the flu. My parents have the flu, even after taking their flu vaccine. We haven't had sunlight here for over a month. I'm extremely concerned, and I'm doing my duty as a human on Earth to protect myself and my family and loved ones by trying to find someone that's willing to actually test what the actual elements in the air that we're breathing are because the uh -huh. DEQ here does not test mobile sources of emissions, and the, the test results that we're getting back of the air samples, the air data here, does not include heavy metals, biological material, or chemicals that we are concerned about. Mm -hmm. I understand your concern. What I can tell you is that we conduct field campaigns with our own research aircraft, and we have sampled the air all over the world. Okay. And I can, I can tell you that what we find coming out of the tails of aircraft are contrails. Okay, well, that's a complete and utter garbage. I would like to see your reports, and where can I find this so-called data? And have you done this here in Hampton Roads with the military jets? I understand that you are very concerned and that there are many people who believe Have you tested are... the military jets here? That's what I, because I believe a lot of these no, aircraft... No, we have no role in testing the emissions from aircraft on the ground. Yeah, see? Uh, I'm sure. That, I'm sure that they go through some sort of. I don't. I. I honestly don't know. The Environmental Protection Agency may have some information for you. Uh, I've already testified on C-SPAN before the Environmental Protection Agency, bringing them my blood, soil, uh, water, and hair samples, showing high levels of strontium, barium, aluminum, cadmium, lead, mercury, um, uranium. What does, your, what does your local What does your local Environmental Protection in the state or in your uh, county? It's, uh, the local okay. EPA here in Region Three does absolutely nothing except for cover up anything they do not give us they don't do anything which is what all of you do nothing that's the only thing that i've found that is common in every agency that i've called and the contrail myth or theory that you guys are trying to perpetuate to those of us that are in the know is absolutely absurd and it's unscientific I am not going to allow you to t uh, tell me that these are contrails when the condition of the atmosphere is abhorrent at best. I want an actual scientist. Ma'am, I can see that you have made up your mind. So I haven't made I up my mind. I'm you calling you. I'm calling you to get a scientist. I haven't made up my mind. I need help. So um, I would think you would want a scientist familiar with your region. Okay. And I would suggest contacting um, the research universities in your area and seeing if there's a scientist at one of the research universities who studies atmospheric chemistry. But I thought that's, that's who I was calling right want. now. Aren't you, don't you have atmospheric We're chemistry? a national center. We're a national center, and we conduct research that is funded to look at specific issues. We have 
done research on condensation trails, and apparently you're not interested in the results of that research. I've, I've done uh, more research than you have probably on condensation trails, ma'am. This, this ain't my first rodeo. Um, I would like to know if you've done any research into the spraying planes, the a clandestine military operation of I can, geoengineering. I can send you links to Google Scholar. Google Scholar. Okay. Uh, I, I want to speak to actually, a scientist. Why are you ignoring the fact that I need an atmospheric research scientist willing to test for heavy metals here I'm, in Hampton Road? I'm not because we don't do that. That is not. In of the course, you don't do that because that would that would prove that we are right. Is there somebody that tests for heavy metals anywhere on Earth? I suggest you call. I I can tell you that we have found mercury in the atmosphere from wildfires. Okay, yeah, yeah. That's have you had wildfires in your in your region? Okay, no, it's it's not wildfires that I'm concerned about. It's the fleets of aircraft that I just told you that I witness and document on a daily basis spraying out their that emissions. You're witnessing aircraft flying over your. It's not aircraft flying, so ma'am. I'm, I'm, I do have other calls coming in. What is I your? Wait, can I just get your name? I just need your name and your position there, please. I'm in the office of communication. And what's your name? My name is Jenya Galan. Are you a, a scientist or anything? I'm a science communications professional. Okay, so well, but I so I called you and I was no, still... No, I'm not a scientist. I, but I, and can you, you say... Are, you've reached our information office, and what I'm telling you is that there is not a scientist in this organization who is equipped or funded to do what you are asking, and because you're talking about a concern that is regional that your local land-grant research university would be another good place. But I suggest that you keep an open mind because you are giving me a conclusion before the research has been done. You haven't done any research. You just told me you don't even have the funds to research it. I beg to differ with you. I said I can send you a link to a search on Google Scholar of all of the research that has been done on emissions. On heavy plants. metals? On heavy metals in, that are in my area, in the air? There may be some. There may be some. What's your email? I'll send you the link to the my, search results. My email is Madison Star Moon Amanda. I know it's long. Madison Star Moon, Moon Amanda. Amanda. At yes. <laughs> at gmail.com, and you can find all of my hard work and research into this controversial issue on the Internet by looking up Madison Star Moon. I am very transparent with what I'm doing here. All I want is an honest, scientific researcher willing to help us to investigate what is in the air that we're breathing. It's not asking too well, much. So, so here's my suggestion. When I send you the link to these uh, research articles that are published in peer-reviewed journals, so a peer-reviewed journal is a journal where um, somebody does some research, they write up what their method was um, and what they found and what their conclusions are based on their methods. And then it's submitted to a panel of other scientists who are experts in the field who review it. That, the, that's the review committee. That is a committee of their peers. And after it's been reviewed, and uh, any questions that the peer review committee has, well, did you look at this? Well, did you look at that? Um, how do you know that this isn't an artifact of your instruments rather than something that's really happening in the actual environment? Only then does it get published in a peer reviewed journal. Has any of that and been done on military aircraft? I don't know. I'm going to send you okay. the results. I'm going to do some Google Scholar searches right nice. now, and I'm going to send you the links. When you see the articles, if there's one that seems related to your inquiry, uh -huh. look, look at who the authors are. And then find them. The article. And find them. They're usually associated with the university or a national lab. Okay. And then Go I from suggest there. maybe sending, sending an email inquiry to some of those authors and saying, I noticed you read a, wrote an article about X, Y, or Z. Um, are you still studying this area? I have some questions. Sounds good to me. And when you ask your questions, I strongly urge, I understand that you are very concerned about this. And uh, um, <laughs> you will, you know, how you, 
the basic saying, you catch more flies with honey. Oh, no. No, no, no. If honey, honey will get me nothing. Well, if you approach in a spirit of inquiry, scientists are skeptics. Scientists want to look at observations. Depends on who's paying them. Honestly, it depends on who's paying them. That, and you know that for a fact. When they bring in scientists in trials, or like doctors in trials, you know, a doctor may be say, oh, well, this is doing this, and then another doctor come in and say this is doing well, this. Well, there are many people who study physical science who question whether doctors are scientists. Some doctors are scientists, and some doctors are not scientists. I was just using that as an example. It depends on who's paying them. You know, people become compromised within the government. I know that for it's a fact. Not, well, well, we could, we could talk a lot about, right. you know, a lot of the issues that our country is facing right now, but I appreciate having a conversation with you. Yes, ma'am. And Amanda, let me send you the results of these Google, Google Scholar sure. um, searches that I'm about to do. Sure. And uh, see if some of those studies are related to your question. Thank you, ma'am. Appreciate your time. You bet. Take All right. care. Bye. Thank you for calling the White House Comments Line. The comment line is currently closed, but your comment is important to the public. Oh, holy shit. Bullshit! All right, guys, I'm calling the White House now. Here we go. For quality and training purposes, this call may be monitored, but will not be recorded. The White House. Hi, uh, yes, who would I speak to to, um, to place a complaint on crimes against humanity that I've reported for five years that have yet to be addressed? Uh, yeah, that's why I called you guys. You're the highest power I could think of. Okay, one moment for agency liaison. Thank you. You've reached the White House Office of Agency Liaison. If you're requesting assistance with a personal issue, please provide a written description of your concern. Really? We your call. We are unable to respond to your concern by phone. You may Bullshit! To the president. White House Fucking, ooh. Okay, no, 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 no. This is such horse shit. For quality and training purposes, this call may be monitored, but will not be recorded. calling the White House. Press 1 for the comment line to leave a message for the President or visit our website at www.unbelievable.gov. Press 2 to obtain mailing information for the White House. Press 3 for information regarding tours of the White House. For federal information, call 1-800-ZED-NO-4-1-800-333-4636 or visit the website at www. Hi, yes, ma'am. Did I just speak with you? I, I mean, I just called, and you connected me to an answering machine that was, there was nobody there. I'm not sure. Okay. Well, anyways, um, my name's Amanda Bays, and I'm calling to speak to a live human there at the White House uh, to formally complain, place my filed complaint. Okay. The message office is closed for the rest of the administration, so if you want to... Wait, how is it closed? How is it closed? It's only 12. If you want to register your comments and concern, you can go to whitehouse.gov and uh, click on Contact Us. So there's no one, at the, there's no human at the White House I can speak to? That would be the message office, and they're closed. Yeah, but wait a second. It's it's still noon. I mean, I don't understand why y'all would be closed in the middle of the day. The message office is closed for the rest of the administration. If you want to voice your concern and register your comment, you can go to whitehouse.gov. But you said the message office. That's not a live human. That's leaving a yes, message. Yes, it is. It was a live human at the message office that you would speak to. You would speak to a comment <laughs> operator. Okay, the and you're closed now. for the rest of the administration? So how is yes, that helping the people? You can register your comment and concern on whitehouse.gov. This is amazing. Well, I'm, I'm going to... Have I'm, a great day. Yep, I'm totally busting you guys. <laughs>